Hi everyone, I'm Stephanie Weaver. I'm here in Quarantine Kitchen in San Diego with Microwave Boy on the camera and my special guest, Chef Claire Tanzi from Toronto. Hi Claire. Hello. Claire is the author of this amazing book, Uncomplicated, which I've been enjoying cooking from for quite a while. And Claire is gonna walk me through um, making a broiled fish. We have, we're doing a little bit of substituting, which is what happens in Quarantine Kitchen. Um, so Claire, uh, Thank you so much for joining us. Um, so you know, happy to be here. Yeah, we know I've that never, you're... I've actually never been to San Diego, so this yeah. is really exciting. Well, I, I love Toronto. I've been, it's been a while, but I really enjoy it. And um, love Claire's recipes. They really are uncomplicated. We've actually, uh, we're, we're adapting this one a little bit because I did not have exactly the type of um, fish product that uh, the, the original recipe uh, called for. So we thank, thank you for... Uh, figuring it out with me. So what we're making today is a broiled fish, and this is a, um, I told you what kind of fish it was, and now it's grouper. grouper. Sorry, this is grouper. Um, what other kinds of fish would work with this recipe, Claire? Well, the, the original recipe calls for a, a, a filleted fish that has skin on it. So it, um, so it really works with any small fish that comes with skin on it. So that could be snapper, it could be uh, John Dory or sea bream, um, or I mean, but really any mild in flavor and semi-firm white fish uh, in fillets okay. um, would be great. For, so Branzinos, uh, you know, snapper, catfish, uh, little, there's so many different ones out there. Um, yeah. But ideally it has skin on it, but okay. since your grouper is skinless, and to be honest with you, it's no big deal. Uh, we're just going to slightly adjust the cooking okay. because you don't have skin on it. And then the other, um, and the other component of this is what you call maitre d butter, but it, it's technically compound butter, correct? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So compound butter, which is um, like it's a very traditional um, way of seasoning foods. It's very French. It's very old school French, but it's actually so easy um, and really, really versatile. So. A compound butter is anything that you, um, any kind of butter that you, that you take the butter and you mix seasonings into it, and then you essentially just use that flavored butter as a sauce um, as it melts in, uh, into your dish. Great. So what I did, I'm just getting started while she's talking. Uh, I'm juicing a lemon that's from my garden. And um, I, what I did is I rolled it first because that helps break down the cell walls, right? And helps you get a lot more juice out of your, out of your citrus. Um, and then we're gonna mash these herbs with the butter. So walk me through um, what exactly is going in this butter. So um, you start with the butter. So a couple tablespoons, three tablespoons of butter. And it's worth mentioning that I always use salted butter. Um, you hear a lot of chefs using unsalted butter. I don't uh, like salted. It's more delicious on toast, and it's much more common for people to have in their homes. So I always use salted butter. Make sure it's nice and soft, like at room temperature. Here in Toronto, it's still pretty cold out, so our room temperature is actually a couple of degrees colder than usual. So you just keep it in, like, you know, just keep it in a cozy place so that it gets a bit soft. And then you want to add the... Um, the green herbs at the absolute very end because if you add green herbs to butter that you're mashing together it's going to take some effort to get the lemon juice and everything mixed in there it's going to turn the butter green and that's generally not a good look unless you're writing a Dr. Seuss book. So when you've got that lovely uh, three tablespoons of butter um, you're going to take a clove of garlic and grate it into the butter and I like to grate it because that means you have really teeny tiny pieces of garlic um, as opposed to having to mince it into a fine puree, which can sometimes take a long time and it, it can be annoying. So if you have a fine grater like a rasp or a microplane, you can just run that garlic clove, uh, peeled of course, um, and then you just run that garlic clove through the grater. Um, and then you get these little tiny bits of fresh garlic, which is delicious. And then you also want to use a half of a small shallot or uh, as my American friends call it, shallot. We have different <laughs> pronunciations here. That's right. Um, That's right. And uh, if you don't, maybe uh, shallots are not something that you maybe keep on hand all the time, so it really does not matter. All you want to use is a, about two to three tablespoons of really finely minced onion, fresh onion. So that could be green onion, that could be red onion, it could be white onion, whatever you have got. Um, but you do want to use fresh instead of, say, dried or dehydrated because you really want that kind of crisp tanginess of that fresh onion because that's going to make a really big difference to the flavor of the compound butter. 
<laughs> and then what can often be the challenging part with compound butter is incorporating the lemon juice or any kind of liquid that you're going to use mm-hmm. because as we all know that you know fat and, and water aren't friends oils and liquids or waters aren't friends so we have to force them into being friends you take the lemon juice and it's going to resist being incorporated into the butter that's why it helps to have the butter really warm like really really warm temperature and this is when you're really going to get that fork in there and just start mashing away and it's going to look like it's not happening and you're going to feel like you're getting completely you know going nowhere and then eventually it will come together so you will be able to get the lemon juice incorporated into the butter with the shallot and the garlic and then when it's finally all incorporated all at, that's when you add in green herbs. all at once or a I would do time. I would do you know what I would do a little bit like maybe a third of that there you go because if you add it all at once it's just gonna be extra annoying <laughs> <laughs> how's it how's it incorporating for you Stephanie uh, it looks good. I think it's, uh, so far it's cooperating pretty well. My, um, good. my onion is not, uh, minced finely enough, but you know what? Okay. We're, we're just going to ignore that and continue on because, uh, <laughs> this is where we are. So now I know next time, super finely minced. So I was uh, in a little bit of a hurry. We, um, we talked about whether I could add dried shallots or shallots and Claire vetoed that because they'd be too woody, right? Yeah, like the thing is with dried, um, dried ingredients, and which I love, I mean, I love dehydrated onions, I love dehydrated garlic in the right context. And in this context, what's kind of, what would happen if you had the dry herbs in there is they would almost be like little nubs of, of hard, like, you know, so the texture would be wrong. That sounds terrible. <laughs> it's not, I don't know really how else to describe it, but it's, when you're biting into a piece of fish, you want the, the textural experience to be consistent and delightful. So you don't want to be enjoying this lovely, tender, moist fish. Um, you know, sure, you'll have a little bit of crunch from the fresh onion, just a teeny tiny bit. But if you had the really hard, dry onion, it would just totally mess up the entire textural experience. Um, so that's why I, yeah, I'd suggest going with fresh instead of going with dry. Um, okay. So yes, it is resisting right now. Yes, so you, you beat that butter into submission. I'm beating it into submission, Claire. <laughs> so um, so what I mean by that, for those of you who, you know, you can see it, but probably not super well. So I've, I've just got like the oil, lemon juice separation is happening. And I'm just gonna trust that Claire, who is a trained chef, knows what she's doing. And that if I keep working this, that something magical is going to happen. And, I think that's what I was going to have, I promise. And so, Claire, um, so tell us a little bit about Uncomplicated and the book that you're working on now, the next book. So the book that you're cooking from now, Uncomplicated, my very first book, um, total joy to write. Um, and it was really about proving this, this fact that I know to be true, that cooking doesn't have to be difficult to be delicious. Um, you know, there are so many things out there, little, like, it can be from Instagram pictures to Food Network shows to fancy chef cookbooks. There are so many elements out there in the world that sort of seem to be conspiring to make us believe that cooking is hard, um, that it has to be, you know, convoluted and difficult with special ingredients and special techniques, um, and that you have to have some kind of special knowledge in order to be able to pull it off. And I just wanted to call it big fat BS on that because <laughs> as humans, we have been cooking for ourselves for thousands of generations. It is actually what makes us human um, is the fact that we were able to learn to cook food. We were able to get more nutrients out of cooked food, and that's how our brains got so blessedly big. Um, and so I really wanted to kind of strip away all of the flim flam, the kind of gimmicks, um, the, the like. All, all of that stuff that we see online and on TV and to just use real food, real ingredients that you can get at every grocery store that are not expensive. You do not have to buy very fancy, expensive, high-end things to get delicious food. You do not need, you know, six years of culinary training. You do not need a $500 frying pan. You can do so much with so little and still produce the most extraordinary results. And I really, really wanted to capture that in, in the recipes. And so you'll see that in the recipes of Uncomplicated. They are, you'll see short ingredient lists. You will see no ingredients that you don't recognize. And I shop at a really crappy little grocery store, so my rule is if I can get it there, then probably everybody can get it. <laughs> there you go. Um, 
and it's really simple techniques and I mean as I said no fancy equipment required um, and I just I hope that it uh, inspires people to really cook at home we're now living in a time when people are having to cook at home and so you're sort of having the, you're having this forced upon you uh, to learn to cook to have to cook for your family three meals a day it's exhausting um, but that's really what the first book was about and so it's got a little bit of everything it's got some breakfast it's got some main course soups and main course salads, you know, a bit of chicken, a bit of vegetarian, a bit of fish, uh, lots of pasta, and then a nice big section on entertaining and baking as well, because I think those are all the, you know, part of the joyful uh, elements that make cooking so much fun uh, that people should really embrace. Yeah, awesome. So uh, let's just check in on the butter here. How's it going? Uh, Have well, you made it into submission? It's still... A it's still a little bit separated, but mostly combined. Is that, can I stop or should I keep going? Can I take a quick look at yeah, it? Yeah, I'm so chance? sorry. Yeah, sorry. Oh, that's fine. Oh, that's, that's fine. fine. Oh, yes, okay. your, your onion is in chunks. No yeah, problem. Yeah, no, that's the onions. Gonna, that's going to also help. That's going to also sort of prevent the yeah. whole thing from coming together. So I would say stop. Okay. Um, and then don't worry about it now. And sorry. then you're, now you can add your, um, your herbs. Okay, so, um, so your recipe calls for two tablespoons of minced parsley. I did not have parsley in the fridge. What I had in my yard was a little parsley, a little chives, and a little fresh thyme. Um, so that's what we're using. But if you were going to use a dried herb mix, like this Italian herb mix, about half, a quarter teaspoon, you said, right? Yeah, I would do a quarter teaspoon because especially something like an Italian herb blend is going to have a lot of the really strong herbs in it, like rosemary, sage, and thyme. Those are all like bash you over the head herbs uh, in the dried form. So um, you don't want to overwhelm the fish. When you have a piece of fish, generally the flavor is quite delicate. Unless you're cooking sardines or mackerel, um, your, your fish is going to have a very... You know, delicate flavor, and if you use too much of a dry herb, it can really overwhelm it. So I always say just resist. So hold back and do a quarter teaspoon. If it, that looks beautiful, okay. that looks absolutely beautiful. Great. Um, yeah. So if you're using dried herbs, just I wouldn't go too much more about a quarter of a teaspoon. Great. Okay. So I'm just making sure I'm not going to get butter all over your cookbook. Okay. Well, listen, my my copy's covered in stains. <laughs> okay. So I. The, it's the it's the best it's the best compliment you can give to a cookbook author is to. People come and they show me their books, they're like, I write me all over. That's awesome. That's uh, yes. well, because it means you're using it. Full that's what it's all about. Mine is full of post its, so that's also a good sign. Also good. Absolutely. Okay, so we've got the broiler on high, it's on yeah. the top rack, but we did double check to make sure that my oven safe nonstick pan, so this you have to have a pan that can go in the oven, so we'll deal with high heat, won't have a handle that'll melt. We agreed that this one will work. I'm going to be setting it in and closing the door almost all the way. This does have a slightly higher angle on the handle, which might have meant I might have needed to lower the rack, but this one will fit in. And we're doing medium heat because this is skinless, correct, Claire? Yeah, exactly. So that's a really good substitution. So if you're cooking a fish with skin on, um, which I love, and I love crispy skin, um, you can go right full on to high heat. Um, and then you want then you cook the fish skin side down. But since there's no skin on your grouper, we're just going to use medium heat um, because it won't have that protective layer of that you know um, thick warm. Well, it's not usually thick, but it's usually pretty sturdy. The fish skin is usually pretty sturdy. Okay, great. So um, and now that I know, uh, like I might have actually used the same grater to grate the onion to make those pieces smaller. So that would yeah. be something I might, yeah, I totally, might do totally, next time yeah. around. Okay, so, and we're seasoning the fish, yes, before we put it in the yeah. pan? all over with salt, mm -hmm. uh, both sides with salt. Okay. Um, I call for a half a teaspoon of salt for about um, five ounces of fish. Uh, I mean, four, five ounces times four, that's because it would serve four. Um, so I, yeah, mm -hmm. I like to, um, I, I like to make sure that there's salt definitely all over the fish. And my salt of choice that I use uh, at, in all of my recipes is actually just old-fashioned table salt. Um, it's another one of those things I feel like chefs have kind of ruined, TV chefs have ruined salt for everyone. Uh, because they make you think that if you don't have kosher salt, then like why would you even start, you know? Right. Or if you're not going to use malt and salt, then just go home. I'm yeah. embarrassed to know you. This, I use regular iodized table salt. Okay. Like it is, uh, you know, $1.99 for a huge box of it. Everybody can find it. If you have better salt, better quality salt, different quality salt, feel free to use it. Um, but just know that my, my, um, 
measurement, half a teaspoon, is for a table salt. Okay, great. And um, let's talk a little bit about thawing fish, because the sort of the assumption was here that people maybe aren't going to the fresh fish counter, um, but that uh, that maybe they would be fine frozen finding frozen fillets. So you want to thaw them in the, in the fridge at least overnight, if not a day and a half, correct? So that they have time to sort of come to back to their normal temperature? Um, it sort of depends on the fish. Um, okay. I mean, if, um, if you have really thin uh, fillets of fish, so you know, think of something like sole or tilapia, which can be really like less than a half an inch uh, thick, um, you can it's great you can actually thaw those in 20 minutes and and you know right out of the freezer put them on a metal pan at room temperature and they'll be thawed in 20 20 minutes and you can cook them right away so great. really great way to speed up your your life if you're looking for something for dinner tonight um if you think about it yeah and you want you think oh i'm gonna have fish tomorrow maybe the next day you can certainly pull them out of the freezer and leave them in the fridge um i do really recommend leaving frozen fish in the freezer for as long as possible because as soon as it thaws it's going to start to what's the nice word funkify um you know frozen frozen fish is super fresh and um uh, refrigerated fish goes bad quickly um so keep it in the freezer as long as you can and i do love to like i said you put you take your fish out you put it on a metal pan at room temperature keep your eye on it in 20 minutes is usually thought okay and then you want to pat it dry so that yeah, yeah definitely okay. especially anything frozen anything that comes out of the freezer uh what happens you don't need to know this it's chemistry the physics behind it but a lot of water is going to come out so pat it dry <laughs> okay so we're going to be putting some grapeseed oil in our pan and um, about a tablespoon or so, Claire? Yeah, roughly. Yeah, and, um, and so also can, can use canola oil, which is a very, as you mentioned, a very Canadian ingredient. I'm just kind of, yes. because it's a nonstick pan, I'm just sort of, it's not gonna like completely cover it because nonstick will do that, but I'm just making sure it's sort of on. And then I'm gonna put them in the pan, um, kind of rolling away from me so I don't get splattered. And what's happened there, that symbol is such a great sound, and that's a, a sign that your pan, your oil, is hot enough. Great. Uh, you, only get, you only get one chance at that, and yeah. that's what that sound means, is you are creating caramelization, which equals flavor. Great. And about, uh, so what, what am I, here, I'm going to bring you over so you can see what's going on. What am I looking for in terms of ready to go in the broiler? Because these are pretty thin fillets. I can, yeah, so I'm going to just say, it's going to be about a minute and a half, about 90 seconds. Okay. The great thing with fish is that it takes almost no time to cook. So it's going to be cooked for about a minute and a half, 90 seconds on that side. And then the other great thing about this recipe is you don't have to flip the fish, which is always the hardest part of any fish recipe, is trying to get in there and flip the fish without it falling apart, without it, you know, crumbling in pieces. So why this is why we're doing the kind of the two the two method or the the two heat source um, method of cooking. So we're starting it on the stove top, which means the heat's coming across the bottom, and then we're transferring it to the broiler, so the heat's coming from the top, and that means you don't have to flip the fish. Okay, so I'm so, seeing a color change, uh, not quite halfway up, but I feel like the thinner piece is probably. Uh, ready to go in the broiler, the thicker piece not quite, so should I kind of split the difference? Uh, let's split the difference and fire that baby okay. under the broiler. Right. Okay. And about how long in the broiler? So again, it'll be about 90 seconds. Okay. Um, and it's crazy in recipes when you, talk, when you start talking about things in seconds, right? Like right. normally we're like, like 25 minutes or braise, braise for two and a half hours. Um, the fish is the opposite. It's the ultimate quick dinner. Um, and so you want the fish to be essentially almost cooked, and then we're going to put the butter on top okay. and put it back under the broiler, and then just let the broiler do a little bit of its good work. It's going to melt the, the buttery, lovely buttery sauce um, into a sauce, and then you're good to go. Okay. The other really important thing to remember with fish is it continues to cook even after you take it out of the oven because there's going to be so much heat in that pan that it is going to actually continue to cook. So you don't have to worry that it's going to be undercooked. Um, it's going to be fine. Okay. So I set the timer for a minute just so to remind me to take a look at it. And I've got a pot holder on my hand Perfect. for the hot because the handle will be hot. That's an oven safe uh, pan. Your handle is going to be hot. So you want to make sure you've got a thick towel, a nice thick pot holder silicone, something along those lines. So we're gonna we're gonna just pull it out so we can kind of see what they're looking like. Little, yeah, let's take a little wee look okay. at it. Okay. All right. 
So what I, I'm going to describe it to you. The thinner one is already starting to separate, so I know it's pretty much cooked. The thicker one, I can tell that it still hasn't completely changed color in the center. Should I go yeah. ahead and put the butter on or give it another 30 seconds? I kind of want the thicker one to cook a little bit more. So if it's at all possible to kind of look at where your broiler element is and make sure that the ah. thicker one is right yep. underneath the element. Got it. I know that that's not as easy. And feel free to leave the oven door open while you're doing this. Like you don't necessarily have to have to close the oven door when the broiler is on. Yeah. Um, it's, it's such a quick way of cooking it that things can happen in a, in a heartbeat. Yeah. So I would definitely want that thicker piece to be uh, a little bit more opaque across the entire okay. surface uh, before putting the butter on. Okay. So I did just do that. Let's take a look. Yeah, I'm thinking it's pretty good. We're getting browning on the a uh, couple of the edges. I'm going to give Great. it another maybe. So what I'm doing is I'm putting the, the thinner one's not under the broiler at all. The thicker one is under perfect. it on the right hand side because the, yeah, broiler, the broiler kind of runs down the center third of the oven. So you can, yeah. and I'd never actually thought to do that, but you can adjust the amount of heat kind of like yeah. on a grill where you're moving things off the coals or to the side. Yeah, exactly, yeah, okay. exactly. And I have an electric oven. So my electric oven broiler sort of looks like a very scripty kind of M. Um, but it definitely means that there are hotter places in the in the oven and the less hot ones. It's not something you want to necessarily lean on all the time, but in this case, it's perfect. Okay. I'm going to give it just 15 more seconds, and then I'll put sure the butter thing. on. Okay, sounds good. It smells really yummy. Well, that's good. That's a good yeah. sign. Um, <laughs> and like I said, like this butter is just going to, you can put this butter on toast. Mm. <laughs> it's so delicious. It's actually really wonderful on vegetables as well. So you can uh, you can certainly put it on things like asparagus or green beans or even broccoli. It would be delicious. You know, you can just imagine those flavors: a little bit of onion, a little bit of garlic, a little bit of lemon juice. Makes a terrific sauce on a whole bunch of different things. And I'm putting about a tablespoon on each of the. Uh... Yeah, roughly. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, those are. It's hard for me to kind of tell how big they are, um, but the, the recipe from uh, the butter recipe from the book makes. A about three and a half tablespoons worth of mix. It's between three and a half and four tablespoons. So, uh, you know, you, you can go for it and add it all if you want, because it'll just end up in the bottom of the pan making a delicious sauce. Great, so I'm just gonna put that in there until the butter is completely melted? Do roughly, like I would pull it out just before it's totally melted. Okay. Because like I said, there's still so much heat in the pan that it will continue to melt. And you're not looking to cook the butter or cook the onion or anything. You actually want all that stuff to stay fresh. Okay, sounds good. So I'm just kind of keeping an eye on it. So which is why I don't normally bend all the way over. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, camera. But it's this is also, one yes, it's also aerobics and yoga. Yes, uh, it's very warm in here. It's now very warm in here. Nice little okay. low back stretch there, okay, depending so on how low your oven Claire, is. is that when you would take it out? Oh, yeah, that looks amazing. Can, can we see it? Yep, that absolutely. Amazing. So you can see that it's fairly melty, but you can see, still see the green fresh herbs. You can still see the very large chunks of, of onion, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, yeah, that looks really good. So I'm going to turn my broiler off. Perfect. Close that door, which will help make it a little bit cooler. And then I'm going to put this more cooked one, the smaller one in, because I'm going to give it a little taste. Okay, well it just broke apart, so we know that one's cooked. That's okay. <laughs> This is yet another reason why it doesn't matter what it looks like as long as it tastes delicious. <clears throat> and uh, that was just a clear that you need to watch where you put everything. All right, let me come back over here. Mm -hmm. And this is, i got to tell you, this is a classic time when you're going to reach for that pan handle with your bare hand because you see oh. it and you're used to it being Yes. Cold. Do not do, do that. Do not do I that. Just, I usually just leave my pot holder right there on yep. the on the handle to remind myself. Right. I've burned myself by it that way so many times. It's okay. terrible. So I'm curious, Stephanie, how does the underside look? If you just put oh. your fork under there, does it look a little bit um, roasty toasty or is it totally white yeah. or let me let's take a look. Can you how, can you see? I can see your plate, yeah. Yep, okay. So let's take a look at the underside. Oh, yes, yeah. so you've got a nice little bit of caramelization under yeah. there, okay. um, which is great. Um, um, if you had, if you, if we had done something, if we had done a piece of fish with skin, and the reason why you get mm. the heat that high when you first start it is because when the skin becomes crispy, it's awesome. It's awesome, like almost like a chip. It is divine, divine. And I don't usually like fish skin. I'm a bit wiggly about it, um, but crispy fish skin done in a pan this way is delicious. Okay. 
Those of you who are watching, you have to make this recipe. <laughs> um, that is incredible. And it completely 100% tastes like I got it in a restaurant. So Yay! this is just completely elevates your fish. Um, so what I'm getting is the fish is cooked perfectly, which is mostly luck, I think. But of course, Claire's walking me through it. But um, you know, when they when the the sort of sections fall apart, that's when you know, um, you know, it hasn't. It's that's that's one of the things to look for is you start to see a color change. So that's what I was looking for in the pan. Is I was looking for the uh, opaque the opaqueness, to, like the color starts, and you can start to see the texture of the fish change and firm up. And that's why you don't want to overcook fish because it is, especially if they're thinner fillets, they might have cooked in two minutes. Um, this was a real thicker piece. And, um, and then you've got a little bit of that beautiful browning caramelization on the bottom. The texture is just beautiful. It's, it's very tender. And then this compound butter, which honestly, I, I honestly probably never would have made otherwise. It is incredible. Even with the two big pieces, you know, the, the, the overly sized pieces of onion, the fresh, it doesn't matter what the fresh, you know, it all is working really well. It's not super salty, but it's just perfect. So I would say absolutely two thumbs up on this recipe. Yay! Claire, thank you so much. I must tell you that my, one of my favorites, one of my favorite uh, anecdotes about this recipe is this is a beautiful picture of it. We and we shot all the all oh, yeah. the uh, images for the book in my living room. Um, and That's after cool. we had shot it, uh, my food stylist, so the person who actually makes all the food, ate every piece of it. There were four pieces <laughs> that she ate all. She says it's just so delicious. I just can't stop myself. <laughs> it's really incredible. It's a good sign. So yeah. um, so basically, you can follow along, but. Uh, you'll need if you want the full recipe you need to buy uncomplicated which you totally should do because it's a fantastic book as you can see I've got multiple um, things that I've made or, or I'm going to try and I want to thank Claire so much for being with me uh, this is just a reminder that uh, be careful with your knives in the kitchen pay attention even when you're cutting lettuce uh, so you don't want to have to go to emergency services during this time so just be safe, no, no be safe everybody so follow Claire, clairetansy.com, and I will put the link to her website in the comments of this video. If you're following this or watching this on YouTube, please follow me on uh, Facebook, Stephanie Weaver MPH. Uh, you can also follow me as Weaver MPH and you'll um, Twitter and Instagram, and you'll find Claire's handles because they're all different on clairetansy.com. So thank you so much for being here, Claire. Thanks for thank sharing Thank you so much knowledge. for having me. Enjoy the fish. Thank and, you. Uh, yeah, let, yeah, let me know if you have any questions or anything else. Yeah. I'd love to be a stay, stay in touch. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Okay, bye.